What is the purpose of fivefold ministry? What is the purpose of apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers? Okay, I want to give you this quick reasoning. You can find this in Ephesians 4, verse 8. I'm going to give you line upon line, precept upon precept, so that you don't think that I'm making this stuff up. It's all in your Bible. Okay, verse 12, Tabitha, it says, to equip the saints for the work of ministry. For the work of what? All y'all called to ministry. Oh, that's good news. I don't know if I'm called. I got good news for you. It's right there. That means every person in this room, you will minister of the gospel of Jesus. I can't get no help. I'm not making it up. This is good news. Okay, let me read it slow because some of y'all don't want to hear it. To equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, okay? So that means that God would choose the fivefold, apostles, prophets, evangelists, teachers, shepherds, right, to equip you so that you could do the work of ministry. What does that work of ministry look like? It looks like whatever Jesus wants to do to serve the body of Christ. Okay? Don't be thrown off, y'all. They're just kids. They, they, they're doing what they, what they do. Right, so when, when he gives us these gifts and he says, I want, I want the ministry gifts to help equip uh, the saints for the work of ministry, it means that when I tell you on a Sunday morning that you have the ability to lay hands on the sick and see it recover, cast out demons, raise the dead. Did you know this is the, this is the lowest level of your life? Th this is groundwork. This is ground zero. This is light work. It means that, that, that the, the, the most common thing that you could do daily outside of sharing the good news of Jesus Christ is casting out demons, healing the sick, raising the dead. Oh, this is good. It, it, here, here's even better news. You ain't got to call Pastor Chris. Oh, I, I feel that thing. Woo. What? You don't have to call pastor so-and-so, apostle and bishop and all the, no, no, no. While, 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 while we're designed to serve you, you need to know the purpose of why we're designed to serve you is so that you could do the work of ministry, right? We see in Acts, the, 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 the multitude begin to explode and being filled with the Holy Spirit results in 3,000 people coming to Jesus. That's that's, that's the power of who we are as disciples and carriers of the glory of God. Amen? Amen. Okay. When we talk about uh, the work of ministry, we talk about the responsibility of fivefold ministry, uh, serving you as saints. Uh, this is a marriage. This is not better than. Your pastor is not better than you. Your pastor is not greater than you. Fivefold ministry is not more important than you. In fact, we're lower than you. Why? Because we're called to serve you. They're not titles. They're functions of how Jesus served. Just so you know, these ain't made up words, okay? The greatest apostle was Jesus. You could find it in Matthew. The greatest teacher was Jesus. That's why they called him rabbi. You know what they called him rabbi? They called him rabbi because all the scribes who were known to know the word of God were dumbfounded that a teacher had come speaking in an authority that they had memorized. See, they could only memorize what they were teaching. But the reason why he had all authority is because look at the word authority. What do you find in authority? What's the root word of authority? Arthur. When he spoke, he was speaking about himself. And so he was saying, listen, I'm not here to regurgitate what you've heard. I'm here to reveal what you've been trying to remember. I am what you've been trying to teach. I'm the Arthur. I started it. I'm going to end it. And, and so you need to know that who you carry, what you carry, the power that you carry. That's why he says he gives us the authority. It means that the Arthur is in you to speak words that came directly from him. You're not a copycat. The power that you are exuding, the virtue that comes out of your body. I hope you guys are getting this in your spirit. The virtue that is coming out of you originates from the power itself. 
in him and from him, by, by, for him and by him, all things were created. And, 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 and outside of that, nothing existed. Powerful. Mystery in itself. That, 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 that the one who created all things and all things that were created for him lives in you. So when you speak on behalf of him, you're speaking from an authority that is even greater than a scribe. He says this, I'll bring back to you, your, I'll bring back to your remembrance all things. Why? Because you have the mind of Christ. It means you're not making up something. It means that what you are reading every single day literally is your DNA. It's so much, it's too much to remember. Okay, I got to keep going. I got to keep going. Y'all getting anything out of this? Okay. This is for the building up of the body of Christ. So in other words, God gives five gifts to make sure that we build you up, not tear you down. I want to say that specifically. If you've been underneath a five-fold ministry leader, who's often designed to like, who often tears you down, then, then they stop operating in their, their function. Let me say it more plainly. They started working for the devil. Our design, no matter what our function is, is to build you up. Tell someone to say, build me up. Okay? So if, you, if you're consistently getting torn down, that's something else. All right? I hope you're getting it. Okay. Another word, another way of saying uh, verse 12, it says for the perfecting of the saints. That word perfecting, the Hebrew word is katarmisos. Uh, okay. It just simply means, listen to this. It doesn't just mean uh, the process of perfecting. It means the process of perfecting for consummation. What do you do when you get married? You consummate your what? Your covenant. Not a legal covenant, but a, but a spiritual covenant. In other words, Jesus is saying, my, the fivefold ministry design is designed, pastors, apostles, right? Okay, when I say fivefold, y'all know I'm who I'm talking about, right? Our design is to push you so much towards the image of God so that on the day you see God, when we have the, the dinner, so there's a day coming that he's going to break bread and he'll drink wine. <laughs> he said that he would not drink from that vine until that, okay? So some of y'all that don't like people that are drinking wine, you need to stop. You're Jesus. <sighs> Read it carefully. Read it slowly. All right, anyway, I'm not trying to sell wine. <laughs> I'm not, I don't, I don't drink it. My point in it is that we are pushing you towards becoming so mature in Christ to the point where you look, act, smell just like your elder brother. Okay? In other words, we're preparing you to smell so good for the wedding day. Oh. Okay, I got to get one. All right. Here's the next thing. How long did God give these gifts? Okay, and let me back up, okay? Because for some reason, when we talk about the bride of Christ, everybody check out. You are the bride of Christ, okay? The, the church is the bride of Christ, and the bride of Christ is the church. Men say, hey, yeah. you a bride. I want my hand back up. <laughs> we are the bride of Christ, and it is the most beautiful thing. Just so you know, everyone's most highest calling in this room is to be the bride of Christ. To, 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 to walk into the fullness of who Christ is. That is our ultimate highest call, to be the bride of Christ. All right. Some of y'all men looking at me like I'm crazy. Let's keep going. Okay. How long do these gifts exist? 
They exist in verse 13, okay? Until we all attain the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God to mature manhood to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. I just had a whole mouthful. I want to simply put this. These these gifts will cease when you look like God. Simple. When I look like God, there's only one... You were made in the image and the likeness of who? So the whole purpose of what you are becoming is to look like your daddy. That's an old sign, like you your daddy's son. But you ain't ugly. (laughs) If you know, you know. It's, It's an old song. All right. All right. So that's that's who calls you. That's the purpose of why God calls. That's how long these gifts will last. I want you to know next is, like, who who actually calls a person into ministry? Okay? Who calls you to be a pastor? Just so you know, I cannot call you into ministry. No pastor, no, no, no teacher, no apostle, no prophet. No one can call you into ministry. Okay, um, for those who have, who've heard that and somebody called you into ministry and you started walking in it, but you, you've been stressing, let me tell you why you're stressing, because you ain't got the grace. I don't want to be a pastor. I'm going to just be honest. Never wanted to do it. I love leading worship. I loved it. I love, I love having my guitar and my piano singing great songs that I can make up in my head and make y'all sing. Right? Because I had a little bit of ADD, so I was just like, well, I'm going to sing my song. Y'all going to sing the song I'm singing. I, I envy Anthony's job. Anthony gets to stand up here to sing songs. Sarah gets to sing up here sing new songs to the Lord. And I'm like, I got to point y'all back to John 3.16. God loves you. And then they up there with, with Moses singing new songs, and I'm like, Jesus still loves you. <laughs> I'm being facetious. But the reality is, we don't call ourselves. Let me take it to the scriptures, okay? We don't call ourselves. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 27 and 28. <laughs> Who calls you into ministry? Now, you are the body of Christ and individual members of it. And God has appointed in the church, first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healing, helping, administrating, and various kinds of tongues. Okay? I don't have time to go into all those other things, but they're very important. I want you to focus on the five gifts. Okay? The reality is, focus on the words. Who did the appointing? Who did the appointing? It's God and God alone. Man does not appoint. God appoints. Okay? God does the setting. God sets you in motion, and it is God and God alone who calls you. Okay? So for those who walk around wanting to do conferences and do all this stuff and start ministries, but you, it's not funny. <laughs> you are hurting yourself, and furthermore, you're hurting the bride of Christ. You need to hear this. No one else will tell you this. Stop going out here trying to start your own ministries just to start it because you felt goosebumps in a service. Stop doing it because somebody else told you. I see you preaching in front of nations. I got that same word. But I got it 20 years ago. Didn't happen. To 20 years later. What am I saying? It's the Lord who calls. It's the Lord who affirms. 
It's the Lord who appoints. Now, I may look at you and say, hey, I genuinely believe like God's going to call you into ministry. Or I may even give, give you a prophetic word from the Lord. But prophecy is not appointment. Prophecy is not me and God calling you. Prophecy is me affirming I see the fruit of the offices in your life. You should probably brace yourself for the same call. I don't know one person who got called into ministry and was like, let's go. I'm ready. Because the reality is the call into ministry is death. His ways are not our ways. Our thoughts are not. That, that, that's not, that's not for, that was for ministry leaders. In other words, it means this. Narrow is the way means this. The road is long. You can start good, but end bad. It means that you can start with Jesus. God used you to heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out devils. And somewhere along the way, if his way is not your way, you've gone the wrong way. That's why it's not my design or my power or my authority or any, any, other, any other fivefold ministry to appoint you, call you, and any of those things. Unless the Lord himself speaks and says, this is my servant. He's my servant. She's my servant. Let me give you an example, okay? Because some of y'all looking at me like, I don't know if that's true. Acts chapter 3, verse 1 through 2. Now, there were in the church at Antioch prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius and Siren, Manian, a lifelong friend of Herod, the Tetrath, and Saul. Verse 2, while they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, while they were doing what? The Holy Spirit said, set apart for me, Barnabas and Saul, for the, work to do, for the work to which I have called them. Notice who did the conversation. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, set apart for who? Me. Who said it? Who said it? Who did the Holy Spirit say it for? Because the Holy Spirit is not the divine authority. Jesus says it this way. I'm going to send one. And the one that I'm sending will not come in his own authority. Which means the conversation of the Holy Spirit comes from the mind of God affirming that the Father is calling you into ministry. Acts 13, go back. Okay, it's the, the, the reality of what I'm saying is uh, we have created microwavable ministry callings. And I'm gonna tell you, it is dangerous. And, 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 and if you're in a class, subscribe to it on becoming a minister in two years, but Jesus didn't, didn't call you, you get a, unsubscribe. You never see Pastor Chris setting you up for subscription to become a minister. <laughs> I didn't start the ministry. I can't do it. I can't call you into it. And any pastor that says that they can, any apostle, it don't matter who you are. None of them are more important than the other. Any of us that say we can call you into ministry, we are liars. Strong word, but it needs to be said. Am I recording? Fivefold, stop telling people that they are called into ministry, calling people into ministry if the Holy Spirit did not affirm it and set them apart. We got to do it right, guys, okay? So I want to set the record straight in this room. I can't, I can't talk for any other church but for Marked. <laughs> I want to stress this because we're hurting people, okay? Just because God hits you in the face one gathering, right? And a, and a scripture came to your head, and God gave you the name of a book. You started writing that book, and you started feeling the Holy Spirit, and you're like, oh, this must be my ministry. A 
That's dangerous. Step back and genuinely ask the Lord, are you calling me into ministry? And if he is, cry. <laughs> okay. All right, let's say God is calling you into ministry. Okay, then we'll talk about what these gifts are and how they function. All right, let's, let's, uh, all right, Sarah, right? Sarah's been called into ministry, right? She's walking the ordination process. What does this ordination process look like? I'm looking at her life. She lives a glass house lifestyle, right? I tell her, I am watching you. There are other pastors in the city who are watching you. I'm not even ashamed about it. I wanted to know. Other people are looking at you. Why? Because the Bible says that you're called to prove yourself. Means I see something on you, but I cannot call you. So we wait for the Lord to appoint you while we look for the fruit to affirm you. Because I can only go off a of fruit. And if your fruit speaks something else, I'm going to look back at you. You ain't got it. <laughs> right? Is this too harsh? Am I being too harsh? Okay. No, you can tell me if I am. Okay. So, so let's just say, all right, Sarah gets called into ministry, which is, this is happening in the next year, right? It's happening. Okay. Just because Sarah is called into ministry does not mean Dave has been called into ministry, her husband. I'm preaching right now, okay? Okay, because this whole thing, well, God called me, so God called you. Find it in the scripture. It ain't in there, okay? If God calls you, uh, uh, the man of the house, so, okay? But let, me speak, let me just speak plainly. Husbands, if God calls you into ministry, right? And you walk this process and God has appointed you, okay? Don't look at your wife and be like, all right, now you gotta get your classes, you gotta get your ordination, you gotta get your ministry license, you gotta get your certificate, and you gotta get ordained, you gotta lay hands on you. You gonna mess yourself up. Because if God didn't call both of you, then the best thing you can assume, which is the higher calling, is that she's anointed to be the helper. And it's equally important equally important all right if Sarah gets called to ministry Sarah shouldn't look at Dave and be like all right let's go get in line if it's pastor Sarah it's definitely pastor David that's not the case why because Sarah didn't call herself Sarah didn't appoint herself so Sarah can't look at her own husband and say you called too can't do it right this is the respect and honor of the high priest calling those he see fit to serve the bride and the functions, okay? Don't confuse and don't let marriage be the excuse. Uh, never let marriage be the excuse that both of you are called into the offices of the ministry. That's not the excuse. That's permission to start digging. How does this work now? How does this flow now? Okay, let me just say it, ladies. Uh, can I say it? Turn my mic up. Ladies, uh, for whatever reason, uh, women mature faster in Christ more than men. Proven. Just proven, okay? I see a lot, of, a lot of ladies go into ministry, right? Some are called, some call themselves. I, I can't fix that. But let's talk about the ones who called. God called. It is not your responsibility to look at your husband and say, catch up. You will, you will quickly disqualify yourself if you think that the calling of the office is higher than his job to priest you. It is not. 
The pastor that you serve under is not more important than the priest of your household. Never get that twisted. Oh, I got 13 claps. I don't care how much you think he's not anointed, how much you think he ain't like pastor so-and-so, that ain't his calling. And stop projecting spiritually on your spouse because you're trying to get them to catch up to what you're called to. The best thing we could do is explore. How does this work? How does, how does, this, how does this operate? How do I honor you in my office but not disrespect your true function as the priest or the helper of the marriage? I want to say this because this is a, this is a very imbalanced place when we talk about the, 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 those who are called into the ministry. I see so many people lining up in this. You can always tell. You can tell. You can tell when the one's called, but the other one's like, I did not sign up for this. Because one's over there like this. <laughs> you excited and you know, you feel the Holy Spirit and the other one's over here like looking at you. And they thinking one thing, I don't feel the call. I never felt called. And I'm doing it because I love you. If you love, I'm talking to the, the single people and the married people. If you love God and you, if you love your spouse, then don't make your spouse move out of God's design for their life. No matter how much we burn, okay? Just so you know, Pastor Ashley is not Pastor Ashley because I'm Pastor Chris. Pastor Ashley and Pastor Chris got ordained the same night when we were just dating. Mom, is this true? This is facts. I didn't call Ashley. Ashley didn't call me, right? And here's the truth. If she never got ordained, I wouldn't let y'all call her Pastor Ashley or First Lady, whatever that means. We love titles, bro. Find a First Lady in the Bible. Ain't there. First lady and the first kids. <laughs> what? Go get your butt in kids ministry. You just a child. No special privileges. My kids don't get special privileges because I'm the pastor of the church. No. Get in line. Be a disciple. I'll pray for you. And if God calls you, run the same process like everybody else. Right? Let's, let's, make, let's, let's return to the Bible when it comes to the true calling of offices, all right? I'm stressing this because this got really out of hand. I hope this goes viral. And I hope first ladies fire themselves from that title, whatever. <laughs> I hope husbands and wives who are never called to it would give their credential papers back and go get a job at Home Depot. Like you were anointed to be a builder. You were anointed to be an entrepreneur. Like, and that's, that's fine. All right. All right. So, how do I know if I'm if I'm actually called? Okay. One way that you know you're called is sometimes, most of the time, it's early. It's early on. It happens early on in your life. You start having supernatural visitations. You start hearing stuff. Cadence. Okay, maybe it don't sound just like that. But you do start hearing your name get called. You're like, who is that? Who calling me? And it's the Lord wooing your voice, like training his voice to your ears, right? Um, another way that you'll, you'll know that God's starting to call you is you will feel in your own spirit the affirmation from the Holy Spirit, okay? If, if I say, Tyler, I believe God's calling you to be a prophet. And Tyler's looking at me like, bro, how old are you? 
Tyler's like, I'm 32, bro. I ain't felt that in the last 32 years of my life. <laughs> hey, here's the truth. I may have missed it. I, I'm not saying this all, always, but, but, but there is something in your spirit that affirms and confirms this is true. You know how long I ran to be, I ran from being a pastor. I ran all the way up till September 20, 20, 20, 20 when, we, when did we launch this church? I tried to get out of it. <laughs> Only reason we got a church is because Sarah and David moved from Maryland. And I was like, we got to do it now, Ashley. We cannot let these people. <laughs> Sarah moved from Maryland. Anthony moved from Dallas, Texas. Corey and Shamika got blessed from their last church to be a part of Mark. And I was like, all these people, we trapped. <laughs> That's how I felt. But, uh, but, but we really were called, okay? Don't think, we were called, okay? I'm just telling you about how, about how my flesh felt. Okay, so the Holy Spirit like affirms it. Something in you. Here's another part. is there's a witness in your own heart. In your own heart, something in you says, this is, this is true. Whether I'm running for this or not, whether I've heard it for the first time or not, the way that just hit my heart, I need to, I need to, I need to consider that. Okay? I'm not saying for you to just say yes to it. It might be something you should strongly consider. Okay? Here's another one. Through prophecy. Okay? If I look at Genzel and I say, Genzel, I really believe that the word of the Lord is that you are called to the office of a first lady. I'm just joking. <laughs> the office of a pastor. Right? The, the next portion of that prophecy is for the Holy Spirit to set her apart. Right? Go back to Acts. Who did the set apart? Who did it? Okay, but somebody had to prophesy it. Somebody spoke the words of the Lord. And then the Holy Spirit gave the directions, set them apart specifically for me. Okay? Not for Mark. I want to say that. I need to say this. <laughs> uh, T, T's another one who's walking the process of ordination, right? Uh, she's been in, how long have you been a part of the School of Worship? Four years. Has it been that long? You're getting old. <laughs> when a person is called, when a person is called by God, it doesn't always mean that they've been called by God for Mart. That's selfish. If God gives me a word for your life, it doesn't mean that you're going to be a minister at Mark Church. It doesn't even mean that you're going to start a church. Let's, let's back all the way up. Being called into five-fold ministry does not mean that God's telling you to start a church. Can we get over that? Rarely those who are called to ministry are called to start churches. Pastors, in, I'm going to say it. Pastors in the early church did not plant churches. Apostles planted churches. So if God's calling you to the office and you are a pastor, you're an evangelist, you're a teacher, don't assume, well, pastor about to launch me into Mark, Italy. <laughs> about to be, the, let me go ahead and get Mark Bora Bora on the end. <laughs> Look, let me go ahead and tell you, if God calls us to Bora Bora, listen, Fayetteville, I love y'all. You know what I'm saying? Me and Armante, we out, bro. Okay, I just want to tell you that, like, first dibs. I'm not even trying to like project it. I'm just being super honest. And if I can't pastor it, I'm going to be there every other weekend, okay? Because they need help. <laughs> they need help. 
And New York is in the iron. <laughs> okay. Anybody coming to Bora Bora with me? No. Nah. All right. What was I just talking about? <laughs> okay. Okay. My point is this. Confirmation comes from the Holy Spirit. Okay. The, the Lord may use us to call you in the sense of affirming what we see on you, but it is not our power nor authority to move you into the position if the Holy Spirit has not moved you into the position. The position. Okay? Here's how we know. Before you ever got the function to serve in that area, you were already in it. It's not something that's like brand new that happens. When we lay hands on Sarah and we appoint her, it's not something that, it's not like, you know, it's not like Super Mario where she gets like bigger. No. It, it's, the, it's, the, it's the affirmation of what heaven has already witnessed being brought to the earth for its appointed time. To be appointed means to clock into purpose for this divine moment. Because it's not forever. Okay? I hope y'all getting something out of this. All right. Let's keep going. So let's talk about it. How many of you in the room, no shame, how many in the room actually believe or maybe you have an inkling you feel, feel, like God may, may be calling you into ministry? No shame. Lift them high. High as you can. It's awesome. Awesome. I love it. Love it. Keep those hands high. Really high. Let me see. Okay. One, two. Okay. Okay. All right. That was like that was like 40 people. Okay, so um it's like 40 potential ministers in the house of God. I'm talking about I'm not calling, I'm not saying you call, okay? All right. Let's talk, let's talk about the apostle. Okay. None of these gifts are greater than the other. All five gifts are the revelation of what Jesus did in his ministry as a totality. Jesus was the greatest, he is the greatest apostle. He is the greatest prophet. He is the greatest teacher. He is the greatest shepherd. And he is the greatest evangelist. Why? You can't be greater than what created you. Let me say to this side, because that side is really quiet. You cannot be greater than what created you. Okay? So, so he breaks himself up, which is why his last ditch effort and action was to break bread. He wasn't breaking bread for no reason. He was breaking himself spiritually. What did he do at the Last Supper? He broke bread. What else did he do? He what? He portioned himself. Didn't he serve? Did he not serve them? Okay. Why was he serving them? He was serving them to let them know that their functions were not titles. Their functions were serving. That what he was about to appoint them to do was to do this. Always stay at the feet of those you are called to push towards the image of God. That's why my greatest joy is not to be served. That's why I get irritated. I don't need you to serve me. Let me serve you. Because that's my joy. That is, that is literally, literally, I'm not even making it up. I weep over bringing you to I weep over bringing you to the Lord. It is a joy to call your name out before the Lord. Why? Because he put that there. He put it there. If you don't weep before people, you ain't a pastor. If you don't like serving, you definitely ain't called to ministry. If you're allergic to a mop, it ain't in you. 
If you love to be seen, you're not called to the offices. If you love the mic, but not a mop. I'm not even trying to rap. I'm just being very honest and sincere with you. You are not called. You just like to be seen. And that's just a doorway into the spirit of pride to grab a hold of your life so that you move forward in being used but never being known by the Father. Do not get hung up on the tactics of the enemy. The enemy does not mind making you, allowing you to heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out demons. And just so you know, like all those things, healing the sick, raising the dead, casting out demons, all that stuff is fine. Okay? We can levitate the day. We'd be like, oh my gosh, we're going viral. That man must be a man of God. <laughs> Pay attention to the last thing Jesus says. At least this is not, not the last thing, but he says this that a day is coming when we'll be before the Father. And he'll say, Did not I, I do works? Did not I cast out demons in your name? Did not I heal the sick? What, and what is he going to say? Depart from me. Why? He's not talking to the world. He's talking to those who started doing ministry but lost their way and works became the focus instead of the father. So signs, one is a miracle, the fruit and the evidence that you're called because the gifts are without repentance. All right. How much time I got? I'm really enjoying this. Apostles, okay? Apostles are simply the one or ones who have been sent, okay? The ones who have been sent by God, okay? Apostles often extend the gospel or they plant churches, okay? Just so you know, this is my nature. I can't change this. This has been happening in my heart and in my spirit since I was 14 years old. I've always dreamed about churches all over the world. Okay? In my neighborhood, this lady named Miss Key, she's the pop popsicles or make popsicles. You know what I wanted to do? I wanted to stand right beside her and host a Bible study for every kid that was coming to get a popsicle. And then I wanted to host another Bible study in the crackhead house. I wanted everybody to know Jesus. I wanted the church in this neighborhood, that neighborhood, this, I'm talking about, this is stuff was happening when I, like, I didn't even know what it was. Okay? So if that's your itch, might be a thing. Here's the next one that Apostle does. They ensure that the faith is truly transmitted. When I, when I say transmitted, I mean it is truly being pushed forward throughout the world. Okay? Here's the next one. They always push into new territory, okay? The reality is apostles get really bored of the day-to-day -day operations in ministry. Don't get upset. They're not called to it. They're not anointed for it, okay? It's the reason why the apostles looked at the other disciples and said, okay, you guys are going to go serve the poor, the widows. Why? It's because the function. Their actual design was to plant more churches while somebody else catered to the poor. Neither one was greater than the other. It's the respect of the function. The function of who? Jesus. Not their personalities. Don't get this messed up. It is not my personality. Apostolic is not my personality. It is the function of Jesus in me that is my apportion to serve you. I'm trying to help y'all. Are y'all getting this? All right. So they seek out new territory, like Mark London. Mark Mars. If I, could put a, if I could put a marked on Mars, I would, bro. All right. Here's the last one. They have the capacity to always connect people and bring influence into governmental spaces. Okay. They often have a blueprint for what God wants to do in a city a region or a state, okay? I always talk about this city. You know why I talk about this city? Because that's just my function. 
It is. I can't change it. I have dreams about it. I didn't give it to myself. I didn't, give my, I didn't make my, I didn't, I didn't create it. Okay? That's what the Lord designed. All right? Some of the things that happen in an apostle's world, some, some of the key words that you'll hear is that they're, they're pioneers. They're visionaries. Right? Or they're, they're innovators. Or they're expanders. Okay? Anybody ever been around people like that? All right? Some of the people in the Bible who were apostles, Peter, John, Apostle Paul, Priscilla, Aquila. So for the people who say that women cannot be, read your Bible. All right? Here's some of the main interests of apostles, and I'll, I'll go quick. They're dreamers. New and challenging tasks are their heart. Starting new things, expanding the kingdom is their primary focus. Okay? So if you're called into, if you're called into the function of an apostle, um, one, of the, one of the things that you should look out for, which is my, my issue, which is why Tish and I cannot, we cannot hang out long, okay, is we like to start new things all the time. Like, like how long was the God Mel series? Five weeks. I was done with the series in two weeks. I was done. I was ready to preach the next series two weeks in to the series we were in. It's, it took discipline, y'all, for me to do them. Thank you for the wink laugh. <laughs> that was hard, bro. Okay? Which is why you have teachers and pastors who say, no, be still. <laughs> Go to week three and, then, and do week four. And then land week five, right? Because it's important that all the other gifts make sure that while new things are being birthed, the last thing is being stewarded and developed. Okay? That's the respect of the gifts. All right, let's move to the next one. A prophet. A prophet is simply the one or ones who know. Know what? The mind of God. Know what? What's happening in the earth. Know what? the spiritual climate of the body of Christ, okay? They prioritize listening to God's voice and they serve God as his mouthpiece and his mouthpiece alone, okay? They are tuned to God's voice and his truth for today, which means they agitate people. They always question the present state of affairs, What's happening? If the church is unhealthy, you're going to hear from it from a prophet. They will tell you something's wrong. And they'll tell you again, something's wrong. And they'll tell you again, are you listening to me? Now when something's not wrong, you are wrong. Most of the times apostles are matched with prophets because apostles have blueprints. But prophets, apostles are typically naive people. We don't see everything clear. Prophets bring clarity to what it is and what it isn't. Okay? All right. Here's the thing that you should look out for concerning prophets. Um, they, this is not a bad thing. Let me say this. Let me say this before I say this. Uh, true holiness is their, is their makeup and their design. Okay? Um, there is no gray space in a prophet's world. It is either black or white, okay? Right or wrong, no in-between. No room for the in-between, okay? Isaiah was a prophet. Jeremiah was a prophet. Anna was a prophet. Simeon was a prophet. John the Baptist was a prophet. Remember Jesus says it. All right, cool. Stephen was a prophet, all right? Pro prophets in our modern day, can be public speakers, they can be, they can be powerful politics. Whether you want to say it or not, whether you want to love him or not, I truly believe that for the time Trump was a president, Trump was designed to be simply a prophet for God. Don't shoot me, I'm not in politics, I have no deep desire for politics, but the kingdom of God needs to separate itself from the democracy and lean into the spiritual kingdom that you have allegiance to and discern separating who's your president from who's God's ordained man or woman of God. Amen. 
I can get down with King David, but not presidents. You need to check your heart. Because our allegiance is not to presidents. That's why God put this ordinance in the, uh, in the Constitution. Pray for your leaders. He didn't say spiritual leaders. He just said leaders. Obey the law of the what? Land. Because God works all things together for those who love him and are called according to his purpose. So sometimes God will take a person who is not saved, put them in high positions for his divine purpose. Can you discern it? I'm not endorsing Trump. I'm just telling you, don't, don't be so familiar with God that you miss God when God plays chess and you're trying to play checkers. Don't do it. You'll get left behind. Let me say it again. I am not endorsing Trump. I am not endorsing. <laughs> I'm not mad because that's how people are. That's how Christians are. We, we hear what we want to hear instead of hearing facts, okay? The next president, I will believe within my heart. I will, I will believe whoever the next president is with all my heart, they were called by God. I am rubbing people wrong. But read your Bible. No one can elevate themselves unless the Lord does it. Sometimes God will exalt a person to fall faster. But it's still according to his purpose. That's why you shouldn't get in God's way when you don't understand his way. His ways are not our ways and his thoughts are not our thoughts, which means you don't know God's next move. I don't know God. Back to the, back to the prophets, okay, because I'm making some people back. How many are going to leave Mark Church because I just said that? Go ahead and tell me. You leaving? Bye. I'm just joking. Bye. <laughs> Let me just tell y'all, that felt so good to say. I ain't even gonna lie. I just said that. I think that was like a hundred years worth of like a pastoral grief right there. Okay, don't leave. But I do want us to grow up and separate what kingdom we belong to. America is America. You may have been born into it, but you better read the scriptures. You, you, you are, this is not your kingdom. You may be in it, but you're not of it. All right. Let's keep going. All right. Did I, did I say everything I wanted to say for the prophet? No. I didn't. <laughs> All right, so repentance, they're obedient, they love revelation, they are agitators, and they question almost everything. Here's the reality of a prophet. Prophets are often right a lot, but they also can be used to become the most prideful people ever. Why? Because they're right almost all the time, which is even more the reason why prophets should humble themselves. Because even in your ability to be right, you can be wrong with the right, with the wrong spirit. So always be like, be, be meek in your function. It, it, is, it is the truth in you that makes you right. Not your, you know what I'm saying? It's Jesus. It's Jesus is the author of right. Thank you. That blessed me. Evangelists. Let's talk, about, let's talk about evangelists. I love evangelists. Evangelists are those who recruit and those who spread the gospel, okay? You cannot, you cannot shut an evangelist up. If you're with an evangelist, we're talking about Jesus. Whether you want to or not, we are talking about Jesus. Say his name or not. Evangelists are awesome in universities and school. If they say you can't say the name of Jesus, it don't matter. But you know who we're talking about. He's a lily in the valley. He's a rose in the valley. You know, maybe using all the words around it. 
He's a bright and morning star. I think he's talking about. <laughs> they have a deep responsibility and a call and a call to redemption for those who are lost. Those who are far from God make them weep. Okay? Those who do not know who Christ is, they're always advocating for a space to be created for those who are far from God to have an opportunity to hear the good news of God's kingdom. All right? They remind Christians all over the world that there is still one more person to reach. That's why Reinhard Bunke, who brought millions, documented millions at the end of his life, the one thing he cared about, imagine this, after bringing millions to the kingdom, his only desire with tears in his eyes was to bring one more to the kingdom. Not millions, one. Evangelists are often looking after the one, not the 99. Okay? All right. Here's the... Uh, the blessing, I'll call it the blessing of an evangelist. The conversation starters, but they do not know how to end conversations. Amante. No shame, he knows it. Is it true? It's true. And I love him for it, right? Because when I'm done talking to you, I'm gonna send Amante. Amante, he can hold the next two hours down. He can. David Havrilla can hold you down three hours. They got you. And I'm talking about, we can talk, they can talk deep things, mysteries. I'm over here like, do you want to go get something to eat? Nah, this is eat. This is food. This is it. I have food you know nothing of. Oh, that was Jesus. <laughs> I get it. I get it. Okay. Their deep desire is to know that at least is there, are there new people hearing this gospel? Which means in, in the fivefold, if the body is starting to recycle Christians, evangelists are very bored and agitated. Okay? Evangelists make sure that the house is making disciples, not clones. Very important. Let's keep going. I got to keep going. Shepherds. Or pastors. Pastors are those who care deeply for God's sheep. Okay? They are also teachers. There's no such thing as a shepherd who is not a teacher. Amen. Okay? Shepherds are designed to nurture, nurture sheep and bring compassion to those who need it. Okay? They get burdens for those who have burdens. They care for those who have issues, okay? They wanna make sure that the health of the ministry is their top priority. The body of Christ, when it's imbalanced, they wanna make sure that everybody is good, okay? It's, it'll never go away. The burden of God will never leave the shepherd. It will never leave, okay? They're the quickest ones in the office to burn out because they carry the weight of the people, which is why you should stop talking about pastors. Because the one time you get offended, what you never remember is that the three years you were good with that pastor, they were bringing you to Jesus every night, whether you knew it or not. I'm definitely talking about your last pastor. Don't talk about your last pastor at Mark Church. I'm not the, I'm not the one. I don't do it. I don't like it. Whether you like your last pastor, my job is to partner with the body of Christ. I'm not condoning their wrong, but I also know their sacrifice. Their wrong is for God to judge. But what they did in harvest and deeds for the kingdom of God to expand, let us all honor and respect. Okay? The focus of a shepherd is simply to make sure that every single person in this room is maturing into Christ. Okay? Super simple. Here's the, the, the negative part of, uh, of a shepherd that you should just watch out for. 
is they want to be involved in the burden of a person. When somebody is walking through something, they want to be in it. They care about it. This is where scandals happen. Okay? It's not that it started wrong. It's that they closed the door to their conversation. They started having conversations by themselves. So I want you to see how the enemy creeps into every gift. Okay? So, so if you see a pastor who genuinely cares, and you start to see something off, like, I really appreciate several people, okay, in this church that look out for me. For every female that comes up to me, you will, you will see Aubrey, okay? If I am by myself, come here, come here, come on. Where Aubrey at, okay? If this is me and you, how you doing? I'm at the end of the service. Service was good. I'm tired. I don't really want to talk to you because I really want to get something to eat. This is Aubrey right here, Okay? Why? I'm just joking. I do want to talk to you. Why is he right here? Because he doesn't want to let my good be spoken evil of. And he doesn't want me to use, I don't want to use ministry as the opportunity to let my phone. Let me go and get your number. How you doing? This stuff happens all the time, y'all. I'm just telling you. Okay. So if you ever, 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 ever see your pastor, I'm at Target, and Ashley ain't with me, and I'm just trying to get two pace, and Aubrey ain't there, and a female's having conversation with me, run! <laughs> Pasta! <laughs> Colgate! <laughs> Aquafina! What you need? Don't leave me hanging by myself, because I don't really want to be by myself. Come on, somebody. Okay, so, and that don't matter. I, I, it don't matter who you are. If you see a minister, especially if they married, right? I do it all the time. If I see somebody in our city who's another pastor who's married, and I see them with the opposite sex, I'm crashing that party. I don't even care if I know you. It's my excuse. I did it. I did it a, mo a month ago. They didn't even know who I was. I was like, what's up? Hey, hey excuse me. Hey, I just want Pastor Chris, big fan of you. Love you, man. Hey, yeah, you mind if I, yeah, bro, like, and I'm going to stay there until either they wife come out of the bathroom, and if she don't ever come out of the bathroom, I'm just going soon. Me and you just, we just booked a meeting. Why? Because you ain't falling on my watch. Why should we let? People fall when they don't have to fall. I'm preaching. Get mad at me all you want to. I wasn't able to get her number. What number were you trying to get? The book of numbers is clear. There's several numbers. What you want? What you want? I got you. There's, there's a lot of them. All right. Don't let, don't let a shepherd let his burden become his fall. Her burden become her fall. Okay? That's why if you ever DM me, just so you know, my whole team got my DMs. You message me, my whole team got my DMs. You ain't just messaging me. And I like it that way. Accountability. All right, all right, let's land this plane. That's, that's, the, <laughs> that's the shepherd. All right, let's make sure I'm not missing anything on that one. All right, that's a lot there. Let's keep going. Teachers, someone say teachers. Teachers, teachers are designed to help the word of God remain true and pure. It is not optional for a teacher to stretch the word of God beyond its proper context, okay? Um, uh, Janae, raise your hand, Janae. Janae is a teacher, okay? If something's being taught and it seems like we stretch that a little bit, you know, you know, pastors, we can stretch a little bit. I'm just being honest, we can. Uh, teachers hate that stuff. Teachers hate it. 
That is not what the words say. You stretch that. The same way you stretch the, the attendance, you just stretch that word. Because <laughs> pastors, we'd be loving it, bro. We'd be like, oh, that was 1,275 million people at church today. <laughs> Teachers do not like when words are stretched. Let's bring it back to context. They're designed to make sure that the Constitution is taught properly and it is brought in a way that benefits the kingdom without being brought into a space of creating false teachers. Okay? Some, not everybody, just let me say this. Not everybody who teaches the word incorrectly are false teachers. They just need to sit with the scripture a little bit longer. Okay? Can we do this? Can we stop getting on YouTube, looking at pastors, teachers, and, and, and getting into their DMs and, and, or their messages? You missed this, and you didn't say this, or oh, in this, and this, and this, and you missed the period. Listen, it's a life of learning. There's only one scribe who wrote what he taught. It's Jesus. We are learning, which means in one season what we taught you, the revelation may grow or we may realize I was off in a certain area. And if we're humble enough, we'll come back to you and say, I taught that in error. But this is the proper context of what I taught. That's a teacher's design, is to make sure that the word of God is being taught correctly, okay? Most teachers uh, are not magnets. They don't draw large, large crowds. I don't care what you say. I, I was going to say his name. I'm not going to say his name. I'll use, okay, I'll use this example. Charles Stanley. Anybody love Charles Stanley? There were so many uh, uh, Gen Zs in here. I'm so upset. How many, okay, who knows, who knew Charles Stanley? Just by a show of hands. Whew, I feel so much better. Okay, if there's any, any teacher I can encourage you to go back and like, he, he passed away a, a few weeks ago, um, but he's a teacher of teachers. Okay, line upon line, precept upon precept, like just really broke down the word of God. Okay, uh, teachers like that are priceless. They're super valuable. Respect them, okay? But they're not always super popular. They don't have a high charisma. They're not, they're not trying to be that, okay? They're incredible authors, though. Incredible book writers, okay? Miles Monroe, incredible teacher. Incredible teacher. Who's another incredible teacher that you know? T.D. Jakes, incredible teacher. Here's another one you know. Who? Tony Evans. Who? Who? Robert Henderson. Who? De who? Oh, yeah, 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 David. They, oh, they, they sleeping on David. Who? You say who? Yes, R.C. Sprout. Come on. What y'all say? Y'all better go get them a juice box right now. The fact that this church didn't say it, get out. We moving to Bora Bora tomorrow, Sarah. Get the whole family. I'm out. I'm just joking. Did you say it? You hire, Anthony. I'm sending you a check in the mail. I love you. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. All right. All right. I am, I'm being very facetious, okay? All right, here's another in-house teacher that you may, may not have known anything about. Sarah, phenomenal teacher. Come on. Okay, Pastor Ashley. Did you say that, Diesel? My man. You know the thing I hate? We get home. And where is Carson? Is Carson here? Carsey Poo. We'll get home. I'll preach my guts out, bro. Carson won't say anything. Pastor Ashley, she get up there and preach. Carson be like, that was really good. 
I'm like, Carson, you ain't like my message? Like, but you know what it is? It's not that she don't like my messages. It's there's a teacher in Carson that's drawn to another teacher. Learn to discern that it's not that you don't like other communicators of the gospel. It's you are drawn to what you appreciate. <laughs> 